A hidden gem from the last generation of consoles, Call of Juarez Gunslinger is a bite-sized showcase for Chrome Engine 5 on Switch. At its core, it's the very same technology running behind the lights of the popular Dead Island series. Except with Gunslinger, all its bells and whistles are concentrated into a more linear, arcade-like experience. Truth be told, the game didn't get much clout on 360 or PS3, partly, I suspect, due to it being a digital-only release. Playing it seven years on though, that really strikes me as a bit of a shame. Gunslinger may be short, but the mechanics are superbly worked, the visual style is striking, and there's a lot running under the hood, which goes beyond what you'd have expected of last-gen machines. The Switch release then sets a precedent in showing a smaller project on Chrome Engine 5 adapting to its Tegra X1 chipset. So how does it run? What are the enhancements over, say, Xbox 360? And what does this say about future ports of developer Techland's work? Let's find out. Grab a gun and get to the window. <laughs> Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Gunslinger setup is a bit of an experiment, but it pays off. You take the role of Silas Greaves, a bounty hunter who recounts his greatest escapades in a saloon, though in a somewhat unreliable fashion. Full of corrections and retakes, every line of dialogue directs you to the next point in a mission, but can also prompt the game to rewind to an alternate version of history. It's all completely scripted, all for show, but this is Gunslinger's big sell. Every aspect of gameplay is rigidly attached to the narration, to such a point that it even ends up affecting the visual design. Scenarios change abruptly, platforms appear between rooftops, as if imagined out of thin air, while enemies swap in and out based on Silas's flaky memory of a scene. It adds a surreal, dreamlike atmosphere to each mission, and makes it easier to forgive the funneling between small areas. Even to Billy, that maybe discretion was the better part of that. While big on ideas then, it must be said the production itself is relatively low budget. Each tale is told through stills and short animatics. There's a comic book style that ties it all together as well, from the vignetting at the periphery of the screen, down to the 2D panels of its main menu. Even in-engine gameplay sports thick outlines on characters, with those shadows helping to give it a saturated, inky appearance. Yes, it is linear, but Gunslinger is a quality over quantity proposition. You'll rarely catch in-engine cutscenes here, but the tongue-in-cheek dialogue helps breathe life into the action overall, which plays out really well. Everything about the tone works, even the way villains are conveniently stood behind explosive barrels. It's a bit of a last-gen cliché, but also light-hearted fun. It makes me nervous standing so close to all these goddamn barrels of cum powder. Why would you be nervous? So, how does it perform, and what does that tell us about future ports from the engine? Could a Dead Island port be possible, bearing in mind its more open-ended nature? Well, it's worth noting before we go on, that Gunslinger on Switch comes in at a 2.6GB download, a bit higher than the 1.9GB on Xbox 360 seven years back. Going in then, I did expect better textures, audio, or something to account for that gap. And while it wasn't exactly what I expected, there are a few changes. Many of them are for the better, and that plays off the very linear nature of the game in hand here. Resolutions first. You'll have noticed switch guns for a significant res boost at a native 1920x1080, while docked at least. For portable play, that translates to just 720p, as you might expect, matching the display dimension. I found no major deviations from these numbers either. So for now, it's safe to say it's a fixed 1080p docked, which gives it a huge leg up over the Xbox 360 version, which ran at 1280x720. One thing that rankles a little here is the extreme lack of any effective anti-aliasing on the image. Combined with the comic book style dark outlines on grass and geometry, the stair stepping is often exaggerated, with lots of shimmer and pixel crawl in the opening mission. It looks much, much better on Switch due to those steps being tinier, but still it's not exactly a clean presentation. Side by side, there are a few other upgrades on Switch. For one, camera motion blur is added to in-engine cutscenes, as rare as they are, which gives those a bit more of a cinematic flair. It doesn't apply to gameplay at all though, but at least you do benefit from upgraded anisotropic filtering on textures all round. 
Plus, that vignetting border is reduced quite a bit compared to 360, meaning you get a wider field of view on Switch. Now, the textures are pretty much identical between all versions. Most are hardly flattering on close-ups, but as an arcade-style experience in portable mode, it's just fine. In docked play, these assets are showing their age a bit at this point, and it's a shame we didn't get any major remaster treatment there to suit Switch's higher, usable 3.5GB of RAM. There's up to a 7x boost in capacity in memory compared to 360, and so it's a shame it doesn't appear to have been used this way. The portable experience is very similar to Xbox 360's then, in resolution. Textures aside, the arcade-style nature of Gunslinger makes for a great demonstration of what Switch can do with the engine. You get some nicely detailed character models, especially enemies in a standoff where catching the detailing down to a finger twitch is crucial. Techland even puts a huge amount of attention into the terrain, making sure so much of it is interactive. There's physics-based obstacles, dangling chains, and cloth that affects visibility. Barrels get punctured with bullets, spewing water on impact, and did I mention the explosive barrels? There are plenty strewn across each level, and it all combines to make you feel like a force of nature, leaving a trail of chaos behind you. There are other highlights too. The score is excellently handled, and on Switch there's no audible downgrade in bitrate to any of its dialogue or music. That's great news given how heavily the experience leans on the audio design. Switch also inherits the best visual features of the last gen version. Screen space reflections are active in puddles and water bodies. We have depth of field in shootouts, and some eye-catching water splash shaders in later levels. Though it must be said this comes at a performance hit on the hardware. The only part here which might be divisive is the shadows. Fully dynamic, they've got this blocky posterized appearance. It's the same setting quality as 360's in fairness, low resolution and dithered, but the effect almost plays into that comic style look. It's like a technical limit masquerading as a stylistic choice, and in the end it did grow on me. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. A quick point on controls. In the move to switch, gyro controls have been added. The idea there is to let you fine tune your movements using the Joy-Cons or the Pro Controller, but in my experience the sensor just isn't quite accurate enough. In the end, I switched it off and carried on using the right thumbstick. You may also need to adjust the dead zones and turn sensitivity in the options. Out of the box, both John and I noticed acceleration speed was on the slow side. Other than that, it plays exactly as you might remember it on 360, which is a great turnout. The visuals are improved then. With a 1080p picture, improved texture filtering and added motion blur on Switch, the prospects of a game like Dead Island also getting a Switch port looks good. And perhaps with dynamic resolution added, you could squeeze the machine to a more open-ended playstyle. The litmus test then is how it actually runs despite those upgrades on Switch. And to kick that off, we have docked play running here. The first impression is that yes, 30fps is the target, just like the last gen releases, except VSync is fully engaged here. A quick flashback to Xbox 360 shows adaptive VSync in use, letting tearing creep in when the game ran over its render time budget per frame. With notable exceptions, 360 ran at mostly 30fps in the opening missions, and that goes for Switch as well. Is it perfect? Not entirely. It's around here, the third level or so, that Switch starts to get pushed beyond its limits. The sawmill mission deploys that attractive rain effect, but really, that just translates to a lot more performance hits. 360 had issues here too, and the result on Switch is drops into the mid to low 20s. This whole downhill section runs pretty much entirely like this, but otherwise, it's been very solid. Barring a few dips around explosive barrels later on, the turnout is, say, 90% in the right place. And so it goes as well for Switch's portable playback. Running through the same areas, you'll be getting 30fps at 720p. Even dropping to a lower resolution doesn't avoid those drops, however. Jump back to the sawmill area, and we're still staring at some perilous drops to the mid-20fps region. Call of Juarez Gunslinger works as a proof of concept then. As a benchmark for future Techland titles being ported from that era, 
using Chrome Engine 5, Switch is clearly up to the task. Though possibly with concessions made, we could see those frame rate drops cleaned up too. What it also shows is the scope for big visual upgrades, going from 720p last gen right up to 1080p here. Supposing Call of Juarez, The Cartel or Dead Island make it over to Switch, there's seemingly a decent level of performance here to see out a port. All that aside, and on its own terms, as a product of 360 and PS3's last few years, it's a tightly strung but exhilarating ride that keeps the momentum going. If you're after some arcade thrills running on one of the more impressive technologies of the last generation, it's a great addition to your Switch's front page. And that confusing maze of corridors wouldn't even be the worst of it. But that's all from me. If you did find this video useful or insightful in any way, please let me know by liking or subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality pristine version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net. And if you have any questions at all, feel free to get in touch with me, John, Rich or Alex via Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No, because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him.